guys, Brian here, Carolina Bushwhacker with part two on how to soft tan a coyote pelt from home. Look at here, look at here. Now he's about completed. And like I said, look at him. He just rolls right over that arm, nice and soft. All right, well, if you're watching this video and you haven't seen part one, go to my channel, go back, find part one and watch it and it starts you on the beginning instructions up to this video here. If you're wanting to learn about taxidermy while you're there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll get notified. I got a lot more videos I'm gonna be bringing. Do me a favor, hit the like button. All right, for the rest of y'all, let's get on to it. All right, guys, so I took it back out of the tan. I've taken it, shaved it down a second time. And as you can see, I've gotten it really thin. There's only a couple holes. This is the bullet entry. And then there's the exit, which a lot of times it almost doesn't matter on a wall garment, but I'll take and uh, close it up anyway. I'm taking the ears, I've turned them, split the nose, split the lips, I didn't mess with the eyes. It's not being mounted. Cut off what I didn't need on the lips. Cut off the base cartilage of the ears. And now what I'm getting ready to do, and the tricky part too, is taking and shaving down this tail right here. Getting in there. See that hair all sticks together, but trying to get in there and shave that down without tearing it up takes a lot of practice comes with experience over time but I'm getting ready to neutralize it and I'll show you after I neutralize it all right so now I've done got it fleshed out a couple times got the skin pretty thin I'm letting it hang up here getting it dried out some before I start applying the tanning uh, oil and I'll take it off brush it on there and then fold it back to itself skin on skin and leave it overnight you want to let it dry out some that's part of it too is what they call thirsty you want to get your pelt your capes you want them thirsty to where they're not completely dried out but they're not too saturated wet you want to get them to where they're drying out so they'll absorb that oil if they're too wet they will not absorb it so you want to get it to where it's starting to get dried out some and it gets thirsty all right well I'll show you after I do that part all right so what I do everybody has a different way I see a lot of people take their capes and pelts and they lay them down horizontal on some kind of plastic lid or a table and they start brushing one side and then they're trying to flip it over on the other side and then you know the oil's getting all over the place me personally the way i do it is i hang it up by the tip of its nose and then i take it and i take the brush and i start brushing it and i start up top and i work my way down all the way around and I'm very, very liberal with it. I don't skimp. I put it on there very heavy. Now what I'll do, slide my hand up in it, grab the snout, and flip it back into itself so that it's skin on skin, and then take it by the tail end, roll it up, put it in the bag, and put it in the refrigerator. Maybe not 24 hours, but it's almost six o'clock here in the evening and I'll pull it out in the morning. So probably 12, 14, 15 hours or so. Hang it back, let it start drying and then start breaking it. Now, kind of the same way before I put my oil on is I let it dry and I started pulling on it. And when it was starting to get dry enough, you can see the white fibers in the leather there stretch apart. That's immediately when I knew to stop with the drying process and get the oil on it, the tanning oil. All right, guys. So it sat for a good 24 hours in the fridge, wrapped up skin on skin. Like I said, I reached my hands up in there 
and grab it and reverse it and then roll it up. I put it in a bag, put it in the fridge for a good 24 hours, actually maybe a little bit longer. And as you can see, it's got that yellow to it where the oils have soaked up in it. At this point, a lot of people will take it and wash it and rinse it and try to get extra oil off of it. I leave it and I'm gonna start breaking it as time goes by and it's slowly drying out because that little bit of extra oil on the outside, there's not much, not much at all. That little bit of extra oil will absorb as I'm breaking it, as it's drying. All right, well, I'm gonna bring that part to you next. All right, guys, it's about 24 hours later and it's starting to dry in pretty good. Here, I'm gonna show you. Still soft, flexible. I've been working on it and breaking it. It's absorbing that extra oil. It's not all oily and slimy. So I keep breaking it, stretching it, breaking it, twisting it, turning it, opening up those fibers. Here, I'm gonna show you something. I got a piece of treated decking board up here. It's got nice rounded corners. The treated lumber is a lot stronger than your traditional white pine. It works great for breaking. Here, let me give you a quick demonstration. I'll just take it, throw it around it like so. Run it back and forth, flip it. And just keep working it. Keep working it. You know, when you start pulling it, you can watch it turning white like it's supposed to. And you just keep working it. Keep working it. Now, for those of you that are curious, most of you probably know what this is already. I'm not promoting it. It's just one of the tanning formulas you can use. I use a few different ones. This one here works pretty good. All right, I'm gonna show you another way that you can break it a little more to get it even softer. And this is where I really figured out how to get it even softer than breaking it that way. Here, let me show you. All right, here you go. You get your bench grinder and change out for one of these here wire wheels. Go with the softer bristles. Don't go with the hard, it'll tear it all up. So you go with the one that's got the softer bristles and then you can take it and you cut it on and you just come and just run it back and forth. I'd cut it on and show you, but it'd make a bunch of noise and you can't hear me. And you just run it back and forth Turn it a little bit more, back and forth, turn it. And man, it'll really break it and make it a lot softer than what it already is. And like I said, this thing is pretty soft. All right, now what I'm gonna do next is I'll take it and reverse it first side back out. And then I'll take a hair dryer and start blowing it with no heat. This thing's already fluffing up on its own and I'll blow it with no heat and then take a brush like this one right here and as I'm blow drying it I'll just slowly kind of work it and run the blow dryer blowing it up and combing it and clumped up little hairs that just start to come apart like they're supposed to and start to get nice and fluffy all right, I'll show you that there in just a second. Now I'll take the brush and I'll brush through it. And I'm not getting too aggressive with it. I mean, the tanning agent that I use locks it in there pretty good, but you know, just in case they were shedding, going from one season to the next, I don't wanna get too much hair falling out of there. And you can see it's all kind of laid down. Now I'll take the blow dryer with no heat. Cut it on high. And back and forth. Back and forth. Just keep working. 
guys there you go how to soft tan a coyote pelt from home i hope this helps out some of y'all up next we're going to do a raccoon then we're going to do an otter both of greasy critters i'm going to show you how to degrease them and when we get to the otter i'm going to show you how to thin that one on down they're very thick skinned to get them softer all right well like always thanks for watching guys hit that like button keep up with me now